Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 235. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening, Norman. Good to hear from you again. Evening to you. So, how have you been doing, man? I'm um, above average. Wouldn't say I've been at my best, but things are alright. Ah, okay. That's cool. So, as you audience at home might wonder, where's Wills? Um... He is currently away. Um, I, I think he's napping before work, so uh, let's not disturb him then. Poor guy works on a Saturday uh, night. Oh right, okay, yeah, Saturday night. So yeah. Ah oh, man. But anywho, uh, it's only gonna be you and me. So yay, it's gonna be fun. Just like the good old days. Yeah, back in the double digits days. Like oh wow, that was weird. Oh, single digit as well. Oh yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, that was that was way beyond. Yeah. But anyway, um, how have you been, man? Oh, I've been all right. Work has been work. <laughs> work has been work. Mm-hmm. And um, whatever time spent outside work is also work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially for that thing like the Friendship Express. Yeah, that, I I can't wait for that. Like it's gonna be what Malaysia's second pony convention. Oh yes, the second Malaysian My Little Pony Friendships Magic Convention. Yeah, that, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Like, I heard a lot of good things about it. Like, uh, I know that there's one podcast going to be there. Like, they're not very good, but they're they're going to be there. Yeah, they're, I heard that they're like the longest running, one of the longest in the world. Are you talking about the Brony Show? Uh, no, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Well, the second, because that title goes to the Bruni show. No, shall you're we? one of the longest. Ah, yes, damn. true, 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 Among, that, true that. I mean, you, you, you really become one of the podcasts that have run longer than even some gaming podcasts and uh, other podcasts that I know of. It's like, you know, you've trailblazed through other genres already. <laughs> you want to know what's the secret? Um, perseverance and pizza? Nope, I just don't know when to quit. <laughs> <laughs> So, but okay, besides us, um, who else is going to be there, man? Well, I'm going to be there. Yay! (laughs) And if I'm not mistaken, Doc's going to be there. Oh, yes, he's going to be there. A lot of our old friends are going to be there. People have been on the show before. Like um, Um, Julie the Dragon? I'm sorry? Julie the Dragon, um, Eric? Yeah, you should be there as well. Awesome. Provided nothing gets in the way. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got a bit of a roadblock in the way of um, Friendship Express, but we're not going to let yeah, that stop us. Yeah, yeah. It's a train. Nobody's going to stop a train. Yeah, I mean, if you play GTA V, it's impossible. <laughs> I think people tried and <laughs> succeeded, but that's besides the point. Yeah. For those of you who are wondering, Friendship Express is proceeding as planned, so we'll see you there. Yay. And if I'm not mistaken, tickets are going to be 7 bucks, and you can pre-order now and also buy them at the door, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, registration, pre-registration has begun for four categories. We have Friendship Express, which is to become an attendee of the convention. You'll just need seven ringgit that will last you two days. You can also register to have a booth called Friendship Pro. It costs you 80 ringgit and 20 ringgit deposit, which will be refunded at the end of convention, meaning you have to pay 100 ringgit up front. Uh, we accept online banking, so get on over to the friendshipexpress.org if you want to register for that. We also have a registration for panelists. You're going to need a ticket to enter if you want to be a panelist, but if you would like to have a panel, do register your interest also on the website, friendshipexpress.org, uh, sorry, thefriendshipexpress.org. And finally, if you would like to volunteer to help out, we would love to hear from you. Same place on the website, you'll find the form right there. Yay, do help because it's fun. You get to see the inner workings of a convention. Yay. Oh, yes. A convention like no other. Yep. Well, actually, there's others, but you'll get to experience a new starting one from the ground up. Yay. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And you met, you asked me who's going to be there. Well, we've got a couple of people who aren't going to be there in person, but we're going to be speaking to them on Skype. Oh. Uh, we will be speaking to Chirpy Chi, who is the designer of our mascot, Rosa. Yeah, I think she was on before. Yes, yeah, Celine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah Celine Lowe. Uh, yes, she'll be, we'll be talking to her. She'll be doing some things about art at the event. And for those of you eagerly listening, we will have Michelle Krieber and Black Griffin Ooh. making an appearance on Skype. We're sorry we couldn't bring them down in person, but we've got the internet. Yay! Wow, it's been a while since I talked to them, and wow, getting them is just awesome. Yeah, so, wow, you know, the MBS show, we talk to people before we actually see them in person. <laughs> <laughs> and even in convention, somehow. Oh, yes. It's quite it's quite interesting, because I, as I said, Norman, people remember you from... 
You know, when we met them at BronyCon, Black Jack's Blade remembers you, Saber Spark uh, remembers you, people remember you. It's it's I think it's quite a memorable experience to be on the MBS show. Let's hope it's a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> well it'll be fun, that's one thing, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Also if you do remember way back when on the MBS show we had this competition about winning one of Michelle Kribo's album that was Timeless Song of a Century. And those were covers of really good songs, like classic good songs. And she covered, and along with, I think, um, Griffin. And the competition was draw Apple Bloom, or yeah, just draw Apple Bloom and have fun with it. And there's a few people who won, and that was cool. Mm-hmm, yep. And for those of you who follow, and for those of you who don't follow as well, Michelle Krieber and Black Griffin, whose real name is Gabriel Brown, have collaborated to make an album called Getting Stronger. And you can go check it out. It's an amazing album. I've listened through quite a bit of it. You know, it's quite weird to see. I mean, not to say weird. It's amazing and, you know, kind of out of the ordinary to see a fan of the show collaborating with someone who's been on the show to create something like this. Oh, yeah. We had a, others that, we had other fans that got into, well, I won't say got in, but participated in doing stuff like this before. Uh, remember Mando? He was oh, yes, on yes. the sh- quote unquote on the show too, or work with the people on the show. Um, he did one song for the Spec Shop, so that was cool. Yeah, and uh, if you want to check out Getting Stronger, uh, it should be on Spotify, but I'm pretty sure it's on iTunes. I'm looking at it right now on iTunes, and it's a uh, you know it's worth a purchase, guys, because you know music these days. <laughs> These are the kind. These are the kind of albums that you won't find on the lists and the charts in this part of the yeah, world. Yeah. So you know, if you if you're tired of that local crap you hear on Hits.fm, no offense, Astro, I'm probably gonna lose my job for this. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like uh, Dan, you, you got good plugs, but I I got better. So if you guys are interested in getting Michelle Kreber's album, Getting Stronger, it's available on. CD Baby, Amazon, and on their website with autograph version of it. Or if you want to get it digitally, uh, it's also on CD Baby, Amazon, Google Play, and iTunes. Their album is at nine forty nine American dollars. Uh, it depends on where you are, so price may vary. But if you want to buy um, just one song from them, it's ninety nine cents American. So yeah, mostly ninety nine cents. That's generally the price of things on iTunes. And for heaven's sake, please listen to it on a device with a headphone jack. Why? I mean, come on, you're not gonna listen to something, you know, an album like this on speakers. You should be listening uh, to it on yeah. something that can do it justice. Well, unless you have a really good hi fi system at home that has really good speakers, then that's besides the point. Just get a pair of headphones. Oh, you noob! But talking <laughs> about guests, right? Like. If I'm not mistaken, you were a, a guest at the Philippine PonyCon, right? Not really a guest. Ah. I was just having a, a little session there, which was called The Path to See PonyCon. Mm. And how did that go? Had fun? Uh, it was great. I mean, the only issue was that um, in the Philippines, it was, at, it was held in Manila, Typhoon Sarika made landfall at 2 a.m. on the same day of the convention which was progressing across Luzon Island, and it impacted the audience of of uh, PH PonyCon quite a bit. So, But I'm really happy that so many people still made it through, you know, weathered uh, strong winds, and whoever could make it out to get to the convention, those guys were really amazing. You know, I'm pointing my finger at Rainbow Dash right about now. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's a one-pony show. <laughs> But then again, you know, if you want to point at Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Dash kind of directed it away from uh, Metro Manila, so there wasn't much of a big storm in the city. But, you know, in people did take precautions because storms are no laughing matter yeah, in the true, Philippines. True. It's crazy. Yeah, that, that is also true. But I'm glad that everyone's safe, so that's good. Uh, yep, that's pretty much the case. Um, the convention went pretty well, and The Path to See PonyCon is this new podcast that... Um, Project C PonyCon is doing to bring updates to everybody in the form of a video, a short video every week. But once in a while, we'll do keynote speeches and something longer to elaborate more on the convention, get to know a lot more things and, you know, for bigger, you know, cornerstone updates that we want to put out. So we put out a big update last week and we've just uploaded it earlier this week, which, you know, this podcast comes on Tuesday. <laughs> um, we we just uploaded it a few days ago to our YouTube and our Facebook and as well as our limited access region links, which is on Billy Billy and uh, Daily Motion. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can check it out there, where we made an announcement about first of all, 
uh, at BronyCon, we made this promise that our ticket price for Project C PonyCon is not going to exceed 50 US dollars. That was a promise we made. Mm-hmm. And when I was on this show the last time, I said that we're going to renew that promise to $40. And now at PH PonyCon, we have renewed that promise yet again that the total price of a ticket to get you in for both days of Project C PonyCon, basic admission, will not exceed 30 US dollars. Woohoo! Awesome. We're bringing it down as far as we can, as long as, you know, we don't end up in a mess. We're pretty much okay. All right. And we also made a very big announcement over there. Oh. Project C PonyCon is the first pony convention in Asia to have a VA in the house. Yay! Who will you be getting? Is it that one guy, Black Griffin? He's a VA too. Uh, yeah, but he's not a VA for MLP. We got, we managed to get Miss Andrea Lipman in the house. Ooh, even better. Are you saying that Andrew's better than that game? Well, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here to make comparisons. Okay, well, I'm just <laughs> saying that Griffin is okay and all, but when you're comparing both of them, like, come on, it's no contest. Fine, okay, fine, okay. You know, not not. I'm not implying that one is better than the other either. Yeah, both are, but, both uh, have their talents. But Andrew yes. Lakeman, she's Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. I mean, Gabe can do a backflip off the wall. Pinkie can do too. Yeah. So, yeah, we've, we're going to be the first convention in not just Southeast Asia, the whole of Asia. We'll be the first convention to have a VA. Yay. So, hope to see you there. Awesome. Can't wait. Like, I, I want to go. I want to try and meet Andrew Lipman and, well, sneakily interview her for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a few other things that we announced as well. We are currently looking for official convention artists and we're also looking for a community liaison so that you know, you can bring some Project C PonyCon magic to your local communities and help the people, you know, there to get excited about it as well. And um, we'll put the show, put some links in the show note as to how you can reach out to us. If for anything, just go to contact at cponycon.com or messages fb.com slash cponycon. All right, then uh, that will be in the show notes. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. That that yep. is going. Uh, wow, I, I can't wait. Just getting the chance to meet with Andrea, like. Thinking about it, ticket price to go to the States is over, well, let's just say you need to work for a year just to get that price, just to get that money to go there. Very, very true. Project C PonyCon is meant to be this convention where we take what has already been built by all these conventions in the region and create something better out of everything, out of the groundwork that's already been laid down by people like the Doc, by people like uh, Benedict from the Philippines, Bensley from Singapore, uh, Parn from Thailand. The people have laid the groundwork for their own local conventions. In September, we completed our crowdfunding campaign. We raised $5,212 and were successfully the most funded My Little Pony related crowdfunding campaign in Southeast Asia. Awesome. That is great. Yes. And right after that, just uh, October, just last week, we announced that we're the first convention in Asia to have a VA and we want to just push on and see where can we bring completely new things to this part of the world. Oh, uh, well, I can't wait. Maybe another podcast. Probably. Yeah, I said we're we're, do, we're already doing the path to see PonyCon. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, you're trying to steal my line, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's besides the point. And talking about guests, um, you did mention that um, who now? Uh, Mississippi Con was it? No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ponyville Cider Fest. Yeah, Ponyville Cider Fest. You said that they had a guest. Yes, um, in fact, Ponyville Cider Fest is less than a week away, and despite being less than a week away, they've confirmed yet another guest. Ooh. It's amazing. Ponyville Cider Fest is already going to have Big Jim, Peter New, Kelly Sheridan, uh, John Delancey, Vincent Tong, Ali Milner, Katrina Headley, Jen Blake, and Ralph Strike mm. all there. And they're adding one more to the list, who's Lexi Hill, who's the voice actor behind Angel Wings. If you've watched Top Bolt, that's who she is. If you haven't watched Top Bolt, I'm sorry for the spoiler. Well, no spoiler there, really. And technically, Angel Wing, if you guys don't know, she's a Make-A-Wish participant and got her wish, and that's her OC. So, yeah, she's going to be there. That's cool. Um, You get to see her and talk to her and, well, wish her well, because whew, she, she's just... Well, her OC is adorable. I haven't seen her yet, but yay, that's going to be cool. Yeah, it's... You know, it's it's one of the beautiful things about this fandom. Yeah... And talking about conventions, right? Yeah. I think that one of the big daddies of um, ponies is going to have their own convention. Big da- Oh, right. Yes. And, well, Hasbro has put their hat into the running for a convention. Yay! And But technically, it's not going to be a Malolo Pony Con. It's going to be 
a Hasbro convention. During Let the- me correct you right there. It's going to be a My Little Pony Con plus a few others. I, true, <laughs> but it's more of Hasbro Product Con because they are going to be focusing on, well, everything Hasbro related from Magic the Gatherings to Transformers to ponies to toys. Now, um, let me ask you a very simple question, mm-hmm. okay? Hasbro's a lot of franchises. But you've never heard of the word transformize and other fact, another fan. I never magic eyes, but you hear ponyfy and I bet you everything there, somebody's gonna do it. You know, you're gonna have, first of all, there's already pony monopoly already. We've won mm-hmm. that. There's already an Optimus Prime with Pinkie Pie on a comic book cover. We've won that. Mm-hmm. There's MLP CCG. It's close enough to MTG, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that the rest of their franchises are gonna be one by one. You're gonna see it, like, you know, Ponification convention going on. I mean, Hasbro's got this down. This is going to be, you know, the most official it's ever going to get. So, yeah. to be honest, I expect to hear some really big game-changing announcements at this one. It's going to be interesting. I can't wait to see how they're going to focus this one because Hasbro as a toy company has multiple things that they're involved with. They have toys, they have card games. You have video games? Quote unquote video games, but yes, they have video games too. And you can play cards on your Xbox. Yes, true that, but <laughs> it depends. Um, basically it's the license to who they do it, but that's besides the point. The point is that Hasbro has a lot of product and for them to have their own dedicated convention for their products is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see what they're doing. And if you're in Interested in going to SetCon? It's going to happen at September 8th to the 10th of 2017 at the Rhode Island Convention Center and Dunkin Donut Center. Huh, okay, that's cool. Dunkin Donut Center. Wow. I know. Donut Con. Mm. Yay! <laughs> but I can't wait to see this because, um, as for now, it's still early. Nothing has been said yet or nothing has been set in stone. But I dare say expect to see My Little Pony Transformers. Magic the Gathering, and a whole other board games on display or for sale. So yeah, I'm cu- I'm curious as to the formula that Hasbro is going to use to approach this because it's not going to be a it's not going to be like BronyCon. It's not going to be like a, a pony convention. Because pony conventions are so fandom oriented. This mm. is product oriented. It's going to be quite interesting to see uh, how I, they I, approach this. I won't say product oriented. I say brand oriented because Hasbro. Like yeah, I that's said that's before, a better way to put it. Yeah. You're right. As I said before, Hasbro has well, quote-unquote, dedicated uh, conventions for each product because, okay, the pony things with the fandom, they're not going to really touch upon that. They they let the fan do what they want to do as long as it doesn't hurt the brand. Um, Transformers has their own thing, like a convention for Transformers, same concept as the pony. And Magic the Gathering has their PPTQs or Magic the Gathering tournaments. So oh, yes. there's that. So each thing here has its own thing and I'm sure there's a board game convention somewhere out there yeah. there's probably one, there's probably one that happens every two days or so <laughs> yep I mean if, if you want to look at it you know hard enough every single RPG campaign's a board game convention oh yeah true that true that and well they have a lot of things and you know what they own Wizard of the Coast and Wizard of the Coast publishes Dungeons and Dragons and who knows we might have a game there yay I'm curious to see if they're going to be crossovers because MLP is known to be this contagious fandom that injects Pony into nearly every single thing in this world. It's going to be really fun to see crossovers. Funny enough that you mentioned that there is a My Little Pony D&D game. Oh, really? Yep, it's official, but it's not done under Hasbro or... Well, it's licensed by Hasbro. it's under Pony Finder? I think so, yes. No, it's something new. I I reported a while back ago. I need to look at it. But it's okay, done by I thought many. it was uh, the Pony Finder. Nah. Pony Finder was a fork of Pathfinder. Yeah, but that's a different story for a different day. But this is something official. It hasn't come out yet, but it'll be interesting if it'll be there. But um, talking about products, um, I think you got something to say about this one? Yeah, um, taking a look at the numbers that um, Hasbro's been going through in quarter three of 2016, the earnings report for a girl's product is up by 57%, which is really, you know, if Anything goes up by 57%, it's good, unless it's the temperature. <laughs> yep, true that. But at the same time too, uh, this is not specific to ponies. It's, it includes Frozen, Troll, Furby, and Baby Alive. So, girls' toys in general are getting an increase. So, yay! I blame Frozen yeah. and ponies. Well, I have a feeling that 
the increase is going to get even bigger because right now we, we've seen things like MLP toys catered towards collectors like the Apple Family Collections. Uh-huh. So perhaps, I mean, I'm pretty sure these are categorized under girls' toys with Hasbro, but these are toys that have shown that Hasbro really starting to appeal to the brony generation, and I really like that. Oh, yep, yep, yep. And, well, there's the whole thing about the collector market thing, and oh, yes. those Guardians of... Oh, those are good, and... I, I don't Guardians know. of Harmony? Yeah, the Guardians of Harmony thing. Like those figures. I want one. I really, really want one. Well, on to the next news. Hmm. How do you segue from um, girls' toys getting a uh, increase of 57%? Hmm. You know what? How about Season 5 confirmation news? Yay. Season 5 was confirmed years ago. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what about Season 7 then? Hmm. <laughs> See, see, five and seven, it works. See, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, anything for a segue, but anyway, yay. Um, <laughs> it's no surprise to anyone, but yes, season seven is confirmed and is confirmed to be airing on the Discovery Family along with Equestria Girl Special plus more movie info. Yay! So yes, um, season seven is going to be aired on the Discovery Family. So yay, and. The little blurb that they have on EQD is that Friendship is Magic Season 7 will continue to be shown on the Discovery family. Um, main 6 are still going to be the focus. And they are promising that this season is going to be the most exciting adventure yet. We'll see about that show. We'll see about that. Hmm. And... If you like the humanized ponies, which is Equestria Girls, I sure do. Sunset Waifu for Life. They are saying that they're going to have three Equestria Girls special. Uh, each of them going to be 22 minutes long and straight to TV. And the special are going to continue on from The Legends of Everfree. So, yay! We might get to see Timber on again. Yay, Timber! You haven't seen it yet, have you? No, I have not. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy this is, Timber. This is, this is Netflix's fault. They removed it. Really? Oh no, sorry. That was Friendship Games. I'm two movies back. Wow. Anyway, I'm sure you find a place to watch them. Um, besides that, talking about movies, um, the 2017 movie. Yes, um, they released the full list of stars that are going to be there. You got Tara Strong and wait. They're the main cast, so they're already stars in our books. I'm talking about the guest stars that are going to come on the show and leave later on. Uh, Uzo Aduba, Aduba from Orange is the New Black, Emily Blunt, uh, Into the Woods and Gnome and Juliet, Christine Kensworth from Rio 2 and the Peanuts movie, Taya Diggs from Mur- Murder in the First, Best Man Holiday. Um, well, there's a full list there. Oh, Michael Henna, Ant-Man and the Martian. And Wolverine. You sound like you're trying to read a WWE roster. Well, trust me, <laughs> I don't know names, so this is really struggling for me. But those people... Yeah, WWE people have pretty stupid names. <laughs> I take that back. They don't. They have great names. Like The Undertaker. Yeah. Okay, that's a great name. What the hell is Finn Balor? Finn Balor's a real name. Take that back. Doesn't change the fact that it's stupid. <laughs> Your face is stupid. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, that's besides the point. For the record, his face is stupid too. I'm sure that a musician friend of yours is gonna hurt you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, um, besides that, there's more news on EQD. Go click the show notes. Um, go click the link in the show notes to see all of them. And continuing on on season seven, quote unquote news is well. Remember Nikon Flown? No. No way. Eh? Um, no, nobody really remembers the writers. The Fine, I'm also guilty. I'm not good with names. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, um, Lee Confluent is a writer for MLP. Uh, I think his first writing work for the show was Party Poop. And if you guys remember, Party Poop is the episode where Pinkie Pie went to the frozen north to understand about yaks. Yep. Yay. And yak smash. <laughs> and Silver Quill hates the yaks. Hmm, I don't know why. So anyway, yeah, he wrote that. If you if you come from a place called Yakistan, that sounds like a third world country. <laughs> no comment, man. But still, that's just ingenious. So he wrote that, and also No Second Princess. Um, he also wrote the Saddle Row Review, 
the Heartbreakers, I think that is the Applejack Pinkie Pie family meetup. And also Dungeons and Discord. He wrote that. So, yay! He wrote some really good stuff. I oh, like, yes. I like all of those things he did. I mean, now that you put it in context, I'm excited. Yeah, so he did say, well, somebody asked if he's coming back to the show. And he said, well, um, to make things easier, just one episode. I shall reserve because, I, you know, I'm going to be the type that's going to wait until the credits. Are like, oh, he wrote this one! Well, yeah, you don't need to reserve until the end. Like, after the whole uh, intro bit. Yeah, 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 I'm more interested in the ponies. I don't read the names <laughs> except for created for television by Lauren Faust. That's the last word I read until the credits. <laughs> oh, you. But anywho, um, he said that he's going to be doing one episode. So, yay. But I do hope that he does more because his work are pretty awesome. Yeah, that is. Mm-hmm. And continuing on the Twitter hype train, someone asked Big Jim this question because it's a legit question that I kind of brushed it under the rock as hit cannon, but someone had to ask. Then if you don't want to get spoiled, close your ears, but if you don't care... Um... I care. Message me when you're done. All righty then. <laughs> so, you gone? Yeah, I'm got it off. I can't hear you though. All right, so. Okay, I'll type it in. But anyway, someone asked Big Jim, where's Applejack's parents... Apple Bloom has not been born yet, so where is Apple Bloom? And Big Jim said that they're on a vacation, on their honeymoon retreat or something like that. So, yeah, we will see how it goes with Season 7. And then we're done. Come back now, please. Okay, God, that's over. I can watch it in peace. And everybody died. Wait, is this a Game of Thrones podcast? (laughs) (laughs) Nah, just joshing with you. (laughs) Okay. That's the news for this week. And continuing on this new topic we have, first impressions. And we're going to share our thoughts on To Where and Back Again, Part 1 and 2, the season finale for Season 6. So if you haven't watched it, I would recommend you go watch it first. But we're not going to spoil. We're not going to go full spoiler. It's just our initial thoughts. That's about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Dan, what do, what do you think, man? Like, I, I'm, I'm guessing you watched the British version of this one? Wait, the two versions? American and British. American just came out today. Oh no, I watched the one that leaked out a while yeah, back. Yeah. So the British version then. <laughs> okay, actually I didn't know that. Are there any significant differences between the two? Any clue? Nope. Still the same, except for, right. um, PAL and NTSC. Oh right, I see. Yeah, okay. But that's the only difference. Other ridiculously than that, low, ridiculously low resolution. Yeah, but that's besides the point. So what do you think of this one, man? Like what was your it first was, reaction? It was surprisingly dark. Really? This was a surprisingly dark episode that had elements that I never expected to see in an MLP episode. And this is, you know, I I would go this is one of my first five out of five episodes in a long time. Would that Opinion change in, well, let's just say six months? I don't know because, um, this is gonna be one of the cornerstone episodes of this season. I was generally not very impressed with season five and season six was, you know, the, the kind of redemption season for me and mm-hmm. it, and this season really ended with a bang. That was quite the finale. Have you seen say. the beginning of season six, like the first episode, one and two? Yes, and the very fact that I can't remember much of it shows how much, ah. you know, you know, I it, it didn't stick with me, but this is going to stick with me. There were things in this episode that really stood out. You no know, elements of things you would see on a you know a much more dramatic show. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil much, but you know, have you ever seen a pony literally almost take a bullet for somebody? That was something <laughs> yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah, I, that 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 did happen. Quote unquote happen. Um, as for me, I do like this episode. Like it's kind of a game changer right out of the box. They started off with background characters and just thinking of who they asked to be on or who they wanted on was insane i know sophisto is quaking his boots with this one like he is enjoying this one a lot (laughs) oh yes that's that's expected i would like to see you know what season seven has in store because you know if they claim that season seven is going to be you know one of the most epic ones uh i would like to see how this would lead into it because we have another you know, we have an ending that wasn't completely conclusive mm-hmm, in this mm-hmm. case, you know, that there's room for more things to happen. And I'm curious to know where they're going to take this, because this is by far one of the deeper stories. I would dare say it's already come to the stage where this episode would, 
it, it sounds like it came out of a, a comic book. <laughs> one of the MLP comic books. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. And well, um, as a fun fact, the title is a reference to the subtitle for J.R.R. Tolkien's novel, The Hobbit, There and Back Again. So yay! If you haven't watched this episode, I implore you to watch it because it is fun. Uh, we have returning characters and most of them are top tier I wish this character would come back characters. So, yay. And uh, I would say that uh, this episode requires some level of continuity to know what's actually happening in the background because this episode does play on the things that have happened in the past of the in the MLP canon. So, if you are not up to date with My Little Pony, I suggest you catch up especially with the uh, premieres and finales of the respective seasons yeah, I... to get an idea of where things are now. Especially, you know, this I see this episode drawing a lot of people who kind of like so-called left the fandom back into the into the fray. Yeah. And I do recommend you go watch uh, Season 6, Episode 16 to get an idea of who that one character is. It's all there. And if you have watched the whole episode, you're not going to miss much. Like, it's going to be there and it's all good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the hiatus. Yay. But don't fret because... Uh, from what I understand, Season 7 is going to be next year. And next year is just, what, a few months away? So you have oh, yep. you have time to relax. Uh, think about stuff like video games. The Friendship uh, Express. Yeah, and that. And Project Seaponycon. That too. But by the time Project Seapony comes around, it's going to be in November, so the show is already in another hiatus. <laughs> no, no, no. Project Seaponycon is in August, not November. Oh, really? No. Oh, yeah. I'm talking, I'm thinking about this one. But still... um. When you say something, get your facts right first. <laughs> Are you telling that to me? <laughs> no, I'm telling that to myself. <laughs> and the audience. Advice. General advice, Jake, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Indeed. But anywho, uh, that was the news for this week. Yep. So, if you... Man, we had a lot of things to cover. Yeah, I know. This is a rare one. Especially with this new talk that I'm doing. <laughs> it's going to be cool. If you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. And me, you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy right now is just, have you seen that new Nintendo NX oh, thing? Oh, yes, yeah. the Switch. Yeah, the Switch. Like, I, I like how they do the name Switch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a portable console. I mean, people's dreams are going to come true. They've, the list of companies they're working with is impressive. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah. Bethesda on that list. Well, the trailer a that company. they had also showed Skyrim on it. So mm. Yeah, but Bethesda's a company that has slammed Nintendo before. No comment. But anyway... Uh, we're going gonna, we're gonna, to we're gonna see another reformed villain right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, where can the audience find you, man? Well, you can find me at Twitter. You can look for Saint Pinky. I am that on DeviantArt, though I'm rarely on DeviantArt as well. Um, if you want to find out more about Project C PonyCon, the place to be is cponycon.com. But if you want to be the first to know about the latest, follow us on social media. Look for C PonyCon, S-E-A-P-O-N-Y-C-O-N. We are on YouTube, Dailymotion, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, and for limited access regions, you can dig us up on a site called Billy Billy. And because we know things were a little difficult, if you wanted to get in touch with just, just generally people who are coming for the con as well, we have a server on a service called Discord. Nothing to do with the Dracona Quiz, though. Mm-hmm. We, uh, it was hard to say things because that Discord link was chaotic. <laughs> no pun intended. So you can log on with much easier now using our Discord server direct link at discord.cponycon.com. Awesome. Much easier. That's much easier. Oh, yes. We just reformed the Discord. Achievement <laughs> unlocked. Oh, uh, yay. Uh, once again, um, how do you say, uh, on the rest of the social media, just look for C PonyCon because Project C PonyCon is a little too long for some of these potato servers to handle. <laughs> We're not on SoundCloud though, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. All the easiest thing to do is click on the show notes to look, to see where all the links are. Mm-hmm. You can also, um, for the latest news on Project C PonyCon, you can catch up with uh, the Path to C PonyCon. It is uploaded to YouTube, Billy Billy Daily Motion every week, uh, if there's an episode. So the latest episode is episode three. If you would like to catch up with that, check it out on YouTube. Is the recording of the Manila keynote? Ooh, I will watch that soon. It's gonna be cool. 
And uh, if you want to ask uh, Project C PonyCon a question, you can do it directly. You can message us on Facebook or just put up your question publicly on Twitter or Facebook and add hashtag Ask C PonyCon to it. Yay, that'll be awesome too. We will take these questions when we can, perhaps do a video response to them. <laughs> that is much better. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. And also please subscribe to our latest show, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Join our charismatic hosts. Well, technically it's just Silver Quill and Sapphire Rider, the charismatic one. I'm just the guy who just tries to control the fire. You're the moderator. That's a very important role. Don't forget that. True, but if your people are trying to set the place on fire... Exactly. Yeah. That's why you're important. Well, I, I'm just the guy holding the fire stick in show. But anywho, uh, do listen to the chaotic fun there. Uh, it'll be awesome. We talk about... Well, we recently did a recording about the Crystal Empire and... Everybody knows how Silver Silver feels about that. So yeah, stick to that. It's going to come around soon enough. I'm I'm sure of it. (laughs) I'm pretty sure he's pretty irritated at the fact that he can never be a Crystal Griffin. You'll be surprised. Hippogriff, sorry. You'll be surprised. But anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel St. Pinky Anthony. And we'll guys catch you next time with another amazing episode of the NBA Show. See ya. Bye-bye.